Welcome, everybody, to Spirit Matters, your daily Bhakti Center podcast. I am Dayal Garunga, along here with Kishore Chandra. Chuta Gopi may join us this morning. She's either running late or not coming at all. Happens with a lot of friends in my life. Things seem to be going well, and then all of the sudden, you don't hear from them again. <laughs> it's a pattern that I've experienced, and you know, you learn to roll with it. Um, just um, so we'll see if she pops in or not. Um, Jeffrey said, get the doorbell ready so you can answer the door when she shows up like Mr. Rogers neighborhood. Yes, exactamento. And Pasha said in her normal general response, ha 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 ha. <laughs> if you're wondering what I'm talking about, we have a live virtual student audience here. We got a zoom room that we interact with that chats with us that gives us facial expressions and that we love dearly. Thank you for being here from all over the world. And thank you for tuning in wherever you're turning in from. This is our daily lifeline here at the Bhakti Center for our spiritual community to share reflections on our own life and how spirituality interacts with our daily activities, as well as our inspirations and um, yeah, things that we want to remind ourselves of as we move through life. And yesterday we were talking about Jeffrey wrote in the chat that he liked Kishore's point yesterday. This is going to have to do with some unpacking. So I'm going to read this sentence, Kishore, and let you roll with it. He said he liked your point yesterday about question, what do we believe uh, about do we believe in what we're endorsing? And you talked about like this unconscious or conscious endorsement through our actions in life. Do we believe what we're endorsing? Are external expressions being a complicit exaltation? Mm. Do you remember saying that? And do you want to unpack that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember speaking about this because it's actually been on my mind the past few days. Um, and it's interesting, right? Because there's a lot to unpack here. Um, the word endorse, I feel like, has a connotation to it that's like I'm consciously um, exalting, you know, something. I'm consciously deciding to say this is what I believe in. Um, however, so many of the things that happen in the material world while we're in it are unconscious, you know, it's like if you really start to think about it and you could literally drive yourself crazy of like how every dollar is spent or how you're showing up in each space or what it means to like be in, in, in the, in the spaces that you're inhabiting, right? Like, and I guess that's a really good question. Like, do I, does me being in a space or does me buying something from someone or somewhere, or does me like, I don't know, sharing something on social media unconsciously, like, does that mean that I endorse it or not? And I, I am starting to think maybe it's a, it's a more nuanced question because I don't think it's as, uh, it's, and I, I, I'll end with this because I want to hear your take on this, Doyal. It's like saying you're in the material world, right? And if I endorse being in the material world, then I support it, right? But by me being in the material world, which is like de facto, like I'm here, it's, it's happening. Um, I actually have the other opportunity, right? We were talking about this yesterday. We have the other opportunity to, we were using this, this, this terminology of getting out. And by getting out, it means getting out of the consciousness of endorsing the material world, right? So if I'm in the material world and I'm constantly doing things that are entangling me over and over again, just getting me deeper and deeper into this situation, then yeah, I'm endorsing it. But if I'm actually shifting and working to working to change my consciousness, like we were talking about yesterday and really making uh, divinity and Krishna the center, then I think that's a different story. It's, it's not so much an endorsement and it's more of like an acceptance, um, a tolerance, an understanding of like my conditions. We've been talking about this a lot these past few weeks of like understanding the body that I was born in, understanding the conditions that I was born in, understanding all of this stuff. And I think that's very different. Oh, yeah, yeah, Chit is here. Yay. Um, and I think that's very different than saying like I endorse this person or I endorse the material world or I endorse this activity. I think where it starts to get sticky or the word that we were using yesterday was wonky um, is when it starts to get a little wonky when, when we're unconsciously moving through the world and 
uh, we might have the best of intentions, but then we either are in the wrong, wrong place at the wrong time, as they say, um, and we get slapped on with, um, oh, you know, you were, you, were, you were seen with this person or you reposted this thing or, or you did this thing and that must mean that you're like this. And I think that that's the, that's, the, that's the difficult part here because I can understand in my heart what I am quote unquote endorsing, but then there's other people viewing me and especially this word endorsement. I love this word. This word endorsement, it has like a very public facing aspect to the word. So it's like when people see me as a spiritualist, as a, as a yogi, as a practitioner, as wh whatever it is that I'm trying to be, you know, they also have an, an image of like what I'm supposed to be right so I feel like it's a tricky it's a tricky question I don't know if I answered it at all or if I, I made more questions <laughs> but I'd love to hear either of your takes on it the question I have and this might bring Achuta into the fold welcome Achuta we love you um is well there's two things one it was was my uh, a, a, another question that I had but the other one what I really would like to unpack like what you were using this word a lot and you ended with it the endorsement and I just kind of wanted to understand better what what that means what do you mean by endorsement like we think of endorsement like I wear Adidas now or you know I have a I have I got a contract with Nike you know um I was doing yoga uh started doing yoga more often and I was doing YouTube I was what doing yoga with Adrian you ever watch yoga with Adrian she's great um Kimberly loves her um I endorse yoga with Adrian. Um, but she was wearing, when my wife and I were doing it, she was wearing a lot of Adidas. And my wife's like, she must have a deal with Adidas. She's wearing all these Adidas. And so we think of endorsement, like I endorse this company, I have a deal with them, whatever it may be. Um, but it sounds like you're using it in a much broader way where there's no legal contract, but we're endorsing something. And so I kind of wanted to understand what you mean by that. And the, the, the other question that I just came in, maybe just I wanted to put the thought out there, we could answer it later, was almost kind of like, does everything we do or not do need to be, is, is, is everything we do or not do a statement about who I am, you know? And yeah. so I think that that's kind of a lot with like, there's so many, like everything you do is a statement about who you are and what you believe. And like, oh, you didn't say this, that means you believe this, you know? Mm -hmm. And so um, maybe just unpack a little bit more what we mean by this word. Yeah, there's, yeah. Oh, got, um, a love for, for yoga with Adrian over here. <laughs> Brudge, yeah. Vidya, we've got America, North America, South America, and Asian continents all expressing love for yoga with Adrian. <laughs> So there's the more, um, uh, I guess, like on the nose definition of this word, which is definitely much more like brand and politics and, and this kind of stuff, like yoga with Adrian and Adidas. Um, and then there's the more like social contract um, term of this word, which is more like, let's put it this way, by agreeing or that's, that's not a great way to put it, by... Um, if I don't do anything about, let's say I'm living in a corrupt government, right? Like, let's say I'm living in a corrupt government. It's, it's obviously corrupt. It's very clear to everyone. And if I myself as a citizen, am not doing anything or saying anything about it, then there's, uh, then there's like a, an implicit, um, what's the word I'm using? Endorsement of it, right? It's, it's saying that I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. And so, I think this question that you asked at the end is really good. Does everything I have to do be a statement? And I think it's a really important question for like today, for the world we live in now, because unfortunately everything we do somehow or another is a statement, which is like kind of, it's a lot of pressure. But if you look at how social media is and how people are, it's like, if you hang out with these people, then that must mean you support this. And if you do this, then that must means you support that. And if you don't say something about this, that means you you don't support this like what's going on with you and so it's more in the social in the social aspect of of endorsing or supporting um i think endorsing just takes supporting an extra an extra step it's like a little bit more firm um and i don't necessarily agree that everything that we do should be a social statement i think that that's kind of like crazy but it's the world that we live in today which is kind of nuts and i want to hear Chuta's take on this because i'm sure she has a lot to say on it. Make a statement, Achuta. 
<laughs> We're going to hold you to it. <laughs> We're going to hold you to it. Tell it. Define who you are in the next 30 seconds. Um, it's so interesting. Like, I, I remember talking about this with different family members and people that I knew. And I was like, you know, when I was growing up, the first thing they taught you is that it was like impolite and a total social no-no to even ask someone who they voted for. I was like, and now it's like, it's, it's the only thing it's, it's a huge thing. And, uh, you know, I, it, I felt dated when I said it, you know, I was like in my day, cause you know, it really felt like I was like, when I was growing up, like the first thing they taught you was like, look, they have those dividers there for a reason. You're supposed to be able to like vote with anonymity to be able to, to cast your ballot, do your thing and then move on without the, the fear of so much public backlash. Um, and now it, it, it's kind of like, not only do you have to show whether you voted or not, and it is a matter of your, your social existence, but now you have to show who your allegiance is to at all times. And it is a matter of your social allegiance. Mm. Um, and, and I feel like, it can be incredibly tiring with all of these allegiances because we're constantly having to pledge our allegiance to someone, something right now, right here. And this stand is going to determine the, the course of our friendship, the course of our interactions, the course of everything right now, pledge your allegiance. That's it. And, and you only get really one shot. There's no coming back from it either. If you choose the wrong one, like, you're, you're a social pariah for a really long time. Like you've been canceled. That's it. Um, and, and then it's like, you know, even if, even if you've chosen correctly, if you, if you are compassionate to anyone that I even don't show allegiance to now, I also get to cast all of my aspersions like, uh, and, and so like you, you've seen people canceled for singing at presidential inaugurations because people didn't agree to that president. And it's like, but okay, but a whole bunch of other people did now dude's president and now, so I shouldn't do the prestigious thing of singing for a president. Like I get it, okay, sure. Maybe we don't agree with the president, but sometimes somebody would like to say, oh yeah, I sang for a president. Like, even if you don't want to name names, um, but it's it's like that becomes everything is collateral damage everything and i think that this attitude of throwing out everything all the time i'm like you're gonna have nothing you know an eye for an eye makes the entire world blind but really if we keep on canceling things everything's gonna cancel out you got nothing like what <laughs> what what actually are we gonna have at the end of this like what is the goal and i think in, in doing this thing we're like trying to like protect ourselves from things but really we're just kind of just like striking the record from everything no strike it all it's done everything's done throw it all out you're just gonna come on instagram one day and it's gonna say canceled yeah <laughs> yeah everything's gonna be completely canceled you're gonna go out. you're gonna go to the voting ballot and be like everything's canceled, yeah. <laughs> it's canceled. I, I um i so much appreciate you use the word compassion because this was the thought i was thinking of when you finished speaking Kishore, and thank you so much, Achuta, for for bringing that perspective and making it so human. Um, because I mean, we do live in an extraordinary. We don't. We don't need me to tell me that we live in extraordinarily divisive times. I mean, we've had for the last several years. Um, but this idea of compassion, and it's like if a phrase that just came to my mind is that we we find what we're looking for, um, and something that I've heard, you know. Our spiritual teacher Radha Swami mentioned that, like, if you're looking for the faults in somebody, you're gonna you're gonna find them. You're gonna find them, and if you're looking for the ways that someone's being sincere, you're looking for the good qualities in somebody, you'll find them also. And I think that you know we we live in a culture where it's almost like you can be scared of doing anything. You can be sitting in a coffee shop, you know, on your computer drinking coffee, and it's like someone who's like, "What are you doing?" What, what what i'm just drinking coffee what, do you know where coffee comes from do you know who made your shoes do you know what it takes to make computers 
Do you understand what you're doing to the environment by sitting in that chair? And it's just like, uh, is that a straw you're using? You know, it's like, and I think it's, and yes, all of these things are important, but it can get overwhelming and can get like, oh my God, I'm just going to stay home and do nothing. And, you know, and then it's like, but like, it's it just, it just, it just becomes something that is, that each of us in so, and then take a pic and post it, it's posted it somewhere online. Like there's going to be a picture of you going like, with like deer in the headlights and like, you know, somebody saying like, you know, global criminal, you know, coffee drinker, you know? And so I think it's, but, but then I think, I, and again, I think it's, it's, and then what happens is that when we do, when we debate the point itself, you know, you know, where our clothes come from, you know, where our coffee comes from, where our gas comes from, you know, where our shoes comes from, um, you know, all of those things, single use plastics, like all the ways that we're contributing to horrendous things in the world. But it's like the way we approach it, because how many, you know, animal treatment and in, in our diet, but it's like, how many of us, it's like, we choose, we choose a high horse to ride on and then we ride it. And anyone that's not on that hire is recognizing that there's all other elements of my life that I'm falling short. And we can kind of like, I can criticize you for this, but how many things can, can somebody point out about me about the ways that I'm contributing to X, Y, and Z? And I think it's this like, it's less about the point we're trying to prove and it's more about the difference we're trying to make through relational bridges and through showing compassion about, you know, our capacity to to live in a broken world that is so much designed to you know the the this the 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 this the what I want to say I don't want to say the odds are against us but like things are stacked against us and I think it's that we can notice something that we know we want to change or disagree with but we can approach it in a mood of compassion I mean I'll just I'm not gonna go well, okay I already brought it up. Um, I just I just remember seeing something like during the COVID during the pandemic and, and hopefully hopefully we're on the tail end of this pandemic we never know um, but you know you would see all kinds of things about like I mean vaccines is a totally divisive topic and so I'm not going to wade into one way or the other but like some people were saying you know we're going to divide into communes and the, it's going to be civil war in America and all kinds of things and some people were saying you got to do this you got to do that and some people were just saying like you know, some people would go so extreme. It's just like, I wish all the people who didn't get vaccines would just die, you know, because the world would be better. And I'm just like, wait a second. You think vaccine saves lives, but you're hoping everyone who doesn't get one would just die. <laughs> so that you, wait, do you care about lives or not? You know? And so um, I think it's just an example of how much we, we get on these high horses and ride it. Um, and in any itch issue that it may be, without recognizing that to be perfect is hard, if not impossible, and to give people space to be figuring things out as they go um, is something we don't do often enough. And I was, I was, I was hearing that as you were speaking, Achuta, and that was kind of like the compassion was coming through, and. Um, and if anybody cancels the show, I, I get it. I understand. I would do it too. We love you. Just joking. Like Don't cancel. Started. Don't cancel us. You know what's interesting? And to Kishore's credit, you know, like he, he was bringing in also the fact that we sometimes will like romanticize this idea that the world was different at some point because it really does make us feel better to think that it hasn't always been this way, but it has always been kind of just material worldly. For instance, you know, 5,000 years ago, God is on the planet. He has a, a burgeoning, wonderful, beautiful city in the middle of the, the ocean on an island, not unlike Manhattan, you know, um, and except, you know, except for way better. Uh, and and he like moves all his friends and family and citizens to this city. And then one person decides that they're upset. And they're like, you know what? I had a jewel and I heard Krishna wanted it. And I didn't give Krishna the jewel. And the next thing you know, my brother is missing. 
had to be Krishna. And then all of the people that Krishna moved to this mystical city in the middle of the ocean decide to say, you know, I think you're right. I think God's a murderer. I think we might have to actually cancel God. Like they were ready to be like, you know what? Canceled, like he's done. And I was like, but he, he just moved you here yesterday. How is this? Are we not looking at the, at the, at the, at the structure of things? Like you run to him for help, has a mystical city protected on all directions by mystical fortresses and things that no one can figure out. He's God. And they're like, no, nah, that's it. I, you know, I really, I think I believe in what this guy says. I'm like, who the heck is this guy? Five seconds ago, nobody even liked that guy. Why are we listening to this guy? And I, I, so I feel like, you know, even God, <laughs> even God. And, and he had to go through a lot to clear his name. Spoiler alert, he clears his name. Turns out well in the end, but, and, and there's a history, not just of this between humans, but you've got celestial demigods. Indra gets in trouble. He needs his mom's earrings back. It's like, there's a demon stole my mom's earrings. They're magical earrings. Don't ever steal a woman's earrings. Moral of the story. Krishna goes, kills the demon. And he's like, okay, I've got the earrings back. Here's the earrings. Indra's happy. He says, oh, wait, you have a tree. My wife wants this tree. I mean, it's a special tree, but can she have the tree? And it's like, whoa, I'll fight you for it. You're trying to take my tree. And I'm like, he just saved the earrings from the demon you couldn't conquer. You ran to him for help literally five seconds ago. Now we're going to fight him. So I am kind of looking at it going, the material world's working how it was built to work. Material world's doing its thing. And we, we have to keep our eye on the prize because that's the trick. Like that's the real defining thing. And, and it's true. Who are we pledging our allegiance to at any particular moment? But it's not really between this political person or that political person or that social activism or this social activism. Really, our allegiance is being pledged every minute. Is it Krishna or Maya? Hmm. The question that, that came up for me while you were speaking, Achuta, in those stories um is why why do we believe what we believe in and i think this is a really interesting thing to to ask ourselves in 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 a social context in a spiritual context because i feel like especially living in this world like we're so easily swayed you know like the entire people of dwarka after krishna just moved them there like we're like oh no we changed our mind and it's like the same thing happens today it's like one moment we're like love and adoring this XYZ person. And then the next day it's like, you're canceled. And I think it really behooves us to ask, like, why do I believe what I believe in? How do I know what I know? Like these questions really boil down to like, if I don't know the answers to those questions, then I'm going to be easily swayed. And if I'm meditating on those questions and really having a, a faith or a loyalty and like, no, this, this is, this is what I believe in. Like, these are my values. Like this is, this is it, you know, then that will create a little bit more uh, foundation, a little bit more steadfastness. And I'm not, I won't be so like, oh, going with the, the times, you know, going with the winds of the times, because it gets really, it gets really ugly, actually, you know, when people just all of a sudden switch, they go to another side. And I think, you know, Doyal, you brought it up. I won't get into it because it's a touchy topic, but I think the COVID times was such an interesting time to see that happen and to see it play out, right? Like people just turning on friends, turning on family. If you didn't believe in one side or they didn't believe in the other side, you know, you should die, you know, you should die. Like it, it got really intense. <laughs> and um, so I think it's really, it really behooves us to, to, to ask ourselves like, what, what do we believe in in the first place? And why do we believe in it? And how do we even know that? And, and that is what brings it back to spirituality. And that's what brings it back to bhakti. Because if I actually believe that Krishna and divinity is in the heart of each and every being, then I would never say something like, oh, they should all die. You know, like all, all those people who didn't take the vaccine, they should. I would never even go there because I'm really, truly 100% believing 
divinity is in the heart of each and every being. So I think it's always as spiritualists, always good to go back to, to like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, let me come back a little bit from this craziness and like, what do I believe in again? Like, what is this bhakti stuff again? Like, what is the soul again? You know? Oh yeah, that's right. These are my foundational beliefs. Like this is, this, this is what speaks to my heart. And therefore let me actually practice it because I think that that is where we get in trouble a little bit. The gap between like knowledge and me actually acting on that knowledge and living on that knowledge because i can know that the soul is there and i can know that like you know chanting the Hare krishna mantra is great for my you know great for my eternal soul and i, I can know that kirtan is you know um amazing and it makes me feel so good and i just feel so compassionate and loving when i'm in kirtan and then come the material world when i come out of the kirtan and i don't know somebody doesn't hold the door open for me i'm just like what how dare you, you know, you can just like get into it just like that. And it's like, how did, how did you forget so quickly of this compassion of the, of, of the nature of the soul and how we're connecting with each other. And so I think it's always good to, to go back, to backtrack a little bit and be like, wait a minute, wait a minute. what, who am I again? What is this? What is all this again? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you both so much. Let's hear Kimberly, some takeaways, how are we wrapping this up and bringing it home with us. When we find what we are looking for, it's less about the point we are trying to prove, but more about the relationships we're trying to build. And it's hard for us to all be perfect. Give each other the space to figure things out as we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, Kimberly. And thank you, Chuta and Kishore, for sharing. And thank you, everybody, for being with us. We love you guys tremendously. Please, please be well. Take care. Join us at bhaktacenter.org if you'd like to kind of figure out some other stuff that we got going on. Kishore and I are still going to Mexico at the end of this month, beginning of next month. April, Kirtan training, Pacific side, Mexico coast. Please join us. Please join us for something else. If you're in New York City, we have Kirtan every Thursday night tonight, 7 to 9 p.m. We're all there. And please, please, please share with anybody you think would like these conversations and discussions. We hope to see you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.